A Trip Down the Red Deer River by Donna Black Coffee cups rattled as we sat around the lodge dining table. Residents shuffled slowly back and forth between visits and activities to their rooms and comfortable chairs. Sunlight streaming through the windows belied the chill outside. Spring was late coming this year. In the pleasant, friendly atmosphere, I turned to Dad and said, So tell me about your trip down the Red Deer River. Dad's blue eyes twinkled as he recalled his days as a kid in Drumheller. Shifting around in his chair, he ran his fingers through his thick, white hair, took a last swallow of coffee, and began. Billy Kelly and me, we were pretty good friends, see. Billy and I did almost everything together. I was living in Drum with my grandparents at the time, going to school, owing to my own folks being out on the farm. It was a brilliant, cold day, I remember. The kind where the hairs in your nostrils freeze and stick them together when you inhale. <laughs> Our boots squeaked on the hard-packed snow as we headed out towards the river, and, and overhead, the sky was blue. Oh, man, it was big and blue, without a streak of cloud in it. Everywhere the snow sparkled with the sun, and we had to squint. I don't remember who suggested it, but uh, we began playing and follow the leader. I don't think kids do that much nowadays, but uh, back then our imaginations were all we owned. Billy started, but I can remember thinking, his stuff was a bit tame, walking on the tops of fences and rolling in the snow, eh? I think I got it a bit pushy, and I started to combine a, a game of tag with what we were doing. Dad stopped. His eyes took on a faraway look as he recalled a drum heller of small clapboard houses, wider open spaces, and simpler lifestyles. So what did you do then? I prompted. Huh? Oh, well... He started to look a little sheepish. I ran down the river... It was near to where we were living by the old hospital. And Billy ran behind me, chasing and trying to keep up. He was laughing, and I remember just a running onto the ice. Billy hollered at me to stop and to get off of there, but I was too busy laughing and showing off. Well, the river near there was open on account of the uh, hot water from the powerhouse up near the bridge, so that the ice wasn't so strong. And jackass that I was, I kept on dancing and daring Billy to follow me. Well, down I went, of course. Got swept right under. Right under? I exclaimed. Yes, sir. I started floating down the current, looking up with the ice between me and the sky. Oh, man, I was scared. I tried grabbing onto the edge of the ice, but it was too soft and it kept breaking. Billy, he kept hollering at me, Larry, grab on! Grab on! But I was getting too cold, and I was tired, and he was too scared to come any closer. He kept running along the edge of the ice, calling at me. But his voice could have been coming from the moon. It seemed so far away. How did you get out? Well, after a couple of hundred feet, I must have been able to grab onto the edge. I, I remember Billy laying down and crawling to where I was. He eventually pulled me out. There was another quiet period of reflection. Then he began again. Not sure I ever thanked Billy. He was a hero. It must have been pretty cold, Dad. How did you get home? Well, I just remember running like the Dickens to get home before I froze to death. <laughs> when I got there, my parents were waiting. They had come for a visit. I didn't want to tell them what I had done, so I told them I fell in China's hole a big old construction excavation I wasn't supposed to go near. <laughs> dad chuckled. I wasn't too cold for long, I can tell you. My dad warmed me up pretty quick. He started with the seat of my pants. We sat together quietly. Dad lost in nostalgic remembrances of the past, and me confined to the imagining of it. Prairie life. Big sky, towering cloud sculptures, rivers and grain fields, snow on snow, mason jars and Saskatoons. 
Collecting the coffee cups, I deposited them in the small kitchen, kissed Dad, and walked out into the sunshine, the chilled scent of lilac following on the breeze.